A couple of days ago, I reviewed the FIO R7, this device right here. You guys seem to really like that review. And in that review, I told you that there was gonna be a couple follow-up videos, and this is one of them. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the entire system behind me, and I'm gonna be telling you how it's all ran off of this single FIO R7. Before we get into that though, this video is sponsored by my Patreon. If you want early access to videos exactly like this one, access to the DMS Josh Fowler Telegram chat, and you just wanna feel all warm and fuzzy inside supporting one of your favorite creators, there's a link down below. Thanks a lot. So starting off, of course, we had the FIO R7. This is a true all-in-one. If you only have a power cable, you can run a complete hi-fi system using this thing. I'm gonna kind of show you how we're doing that. On the back of this device, there are a lot of potential inputs and potential outputs for you to use. This includes analog and digital outputs. And we're gonna be utilizing some of those for this, but just know that there is actually more flexibility than what I'm giving it currently, because it's actually running three different audio systems and it could be running even more if you wanted to. So for the headphones, we have the Aeon 2 Noirs running an XLR balanced cable out of the front headphone output. Then I have RCAs running to these powered mini monitors. These are little baby Genelecs. Now, the way that you differentiate between the RCA outputs and the XLR outputs of this device is using the switch on the front. Now there's four settings on the switch. There is PO plus pre-out, PO only, pre-out only, and line out. I'm not exactly sure what PO stands for, maybe phones out for like headphone out. Anyways, that's gonna be your headphone output. Now you can choose to run both the RCA or XLR outputs out of the back and the XLR headphone output out of the front if you want to. It's a very specific niche case to use that, but you can if you want to, and it's cool that it's an option. Most people I think are gonna bounce between PO and the pre-out. Now the line out is gonna be full volume output to whatever other system you want to run full volume to, so just be careful with that one. And then the pre-out is going to switch to the RCAs or the XLRs out of the back. In this case, we're using RCAs. Now, in terms of the big speakers behind me, those guys right there, I actually have this running to a dedicated power amplifier because they're passive speakers and this is not a power amplifier. This behind me, I'm not sure if you can see it, is an SVS amplifier and that's going to be running uh, into those SVS Ultra Towers. The way that I currently have this hooked up is through Bluetooth. Now this is outputting Bluetooth and the SVS amplifier is receiving Bluetooth and playing out of the speakers. There's a couple other options we have here though. There is coaxial and optical outputs out of the R7. And yes, I said outputs. And that will go into the inputs on the SVS and it will play just like that. One note on the optical, in order to activate this, you need to go into your settings menu in the Android system and turn on the optical output. And then if you want to turn it off and use not the optical output, you need to go in and select to turn that off again. I just wish the output selection was a little bit more simplified. I like Tidal because while they do charge a lot, they have one of the highest artist pay for a streaming service and I like the interface. Now on Tidal on my phone, I can get to select the outputs on the Tidal app. So I'm not sure if this is a Tidal specific issue on Android or if this is an Android specific issue, but I was not able to select the outputs from this streaming service. Now I told you that there was a potential for more things to do with the system than what I'm currently running it with. And that's true. There's a lot of things you can do with it. For example, one of the things you can do is hook up a USB-C to this device into an HDMI output for a, kind of a screen um, projection system. Now. Again, format not gonna be great, but it's just like kind of a cool addition you can do. I also mentioned in the full review that using that USB-C input, uh, you can actually hook up a full SSD to this, whether you want to upload you know, personal files to use for music or other use, it can do all that. Also, because it's running full Android, it can do a lot of obscure things that not a lot of amplifier and DAC systems can do. For example, you can hook up a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse off of this thing. Now, another thing you could potentially do with this device is have this be basically the nexus of a bunch of different amplifier systems. Uh, if you are just really into this hobby and you have a ton of different amplifier and DAC systems and you wanna hook them all up to one device, this could potentially do it. Um, somebody like me could benefit from this. Somebody like Z could benefit this. DMS could benefit from this. Any reviewer basically could benefit from this. As far as my count goes, not including Bluetooth, which is kind of open-ended as to how many devices you can add to it. This has three digital outputs, which can all run to three separate DAC systems if you want to. And it also has three additional analog outputs that you could potentially use as well. So as far as options, this thing is absolutely killer. It's got a ton of options. You can do so much with this. Now, if you're interested in things like the, uh, the bitrate output potential, the types of Bluetooth that it has, 
Um, I'll link to the, this product down in the description. Just go check the webpage. There's an absolute ton to read about this device. And uh, you'll probably want to give it a thorough read through just to see all of what it can do and its potential limitations if you're looking for something specific. But in terms of the analog outputs, this is very similar to all of the other THX devices that we've used. And I actually want to talk a little bit about the power on this device because there was a couple comments in the review saying like, hey, 3.6 watts into 32 ohms is a ton of power. And you are correct. Like this wouldn't stand out as an $800 just an amplifier, but as something that is an amplifier amongst many, many, many other things. And the amplification stage is very, very good. It has really good specifications and measurements and also sounds really good if you like the THX style of sound. All those benefits are, in my opinion, noteworthy. So you can hook this up to planars and get a fulfilled full experience if you like the THX style of sound. Generally speaking, the sound quality is exacting, a very clean and a kind of very rigid structured sounding sound feels very specific. It doesn't feel dull in any capacity. It feels good for dynamic range for the high end, the mids and the low end. Um, the mid range tonality, if you have a good headphone that pairs with it really well and doesn't sound sterile on its own, it can actually perform very, very well. So something like an HD 600 really benefits from this because it's got such good tonality on its own that it doesn't need the amp to help it out in any capacity. And something like that pairing actually works really well. Now, the reason why I brought out the Aeon Noir out here is because this is a planar headphone, but it's also closed. And I have a feeling that some people will be considering this as sort of a standalone device in the sense that all they have is a power cable and they're gonna put it somewhere like, there's a lot of people who listen in bed or uh, on a couch or something like that. And they were going to have just that device hooked up and they're gonna be listening to maybe a headphone like this. So if you're asking, can it do X or Y? The answer is probably yes. There's a couple things that it can't do, but as far as all the ones go, this is one of the more versatile ones that I've come across. There's not really many downsides that I've run into utilizing this device in my testing, um, which is impressive to say. A couple things people might run into here. This is still an expensive device straight up. It might be worth it. It might be one of the only things at this price that can do what it does and it can do a lot, but it's still something that it's expensive. The second thing is going to be the form factor. While I appreciate that they need to do something like this to have you interface with the screen and stuff like that. Um, there's a lot of people who either don't have the desk real estate for a device like this, or just don't like having as big of a interface as this has. So those could be potential downsides for certain people. Either way, I was excited to showcase what this thing could sort of do in a system setup, and I didn't want it to kind of clog up uh, and kind of muddy that review and uh, make it last longer than it needed to be. So yeah, that's kind of the feel R7 system. Uh, just a small window into what you could potentially do with this thing. Uh, I'd love to know how you would utilize this if you did get it. So leave that in the comments down below. Again, join the Patreon if you want early access to videos exactly like this one. And thank you very much for watching. See you guys next time.